Mako Energy is an Australian company with a land package that some say is part of one of the most exciting shale oil fields in Canada. We're talking now to the Executive Vice Chairman of Mako Energy, Simon Owen. Simon, welcome. Um, the potential places like Texas is, is well headlined, but Alberta, it's not really up there, but in fact the potential seems to me to be enormous. It has been enormous. I mean, Alberta's had so much oil and gas that they have only come shall we say, slightly later to the unconventional horizontal drilling technology. So um, whilst the, the Barkin play is a very big one in North America, stretches across the border between Dakota, North Dakota and, and Canada, um, America does seem to have had the, the monopoly on the, uh, shall we say, the, the huge resource plays as, they, as they're known. What's, what's Mako Energy got there? Uh, we have, for a very small company, a very large land package, um, uh, along a fairway about 120 kilometres and we hold um, rights to just over 90,000 acres of land um, which sit in 144 odd sections, a section is about a mile by a mile um, and we hold rights at least at this stage to two very prospective zones, um, one the Rock Creek which was the, the, the zone, the horizon that we actually chased and acquired the land upon and recently or towards the middle of the year, um, when the uh, the cover blew off, if you like, the Duvernay shale play, we found that we were uh, somewhat serendipitously sitting on top of that at the same time. The the the, the Duvernay shale plays, and we've got what, 35 licenses, I believe, and I think two are under auction at the moment, aren't they? So there seems to be a lot more opportunity there. Um, well, this year so far is a huge land play, and everyone has to be positioned. So really. If you like, it started in the public eyes in June when $750 million was spent on land all around us in one day, um, in, predominantly by a, a handful of majors, certainly including in Canada, Talisman and the like, some of the biggest names in town. So it's been a land play during 2011. What's now lining up is the, uh, call it the science or the knowledge phase, which is required in a, in, in a huge shale play like this. Um, so 35 wells licensed, there's, there's probably a dozen wells drilled, um, 35 licensed and being licensed at about, I believe, something like two every week. Mm. Now, um, these are, I say science because almost everyone is going down with a vertical well first and then they'll core it, they'll look at what they want to do. It's, it's probably not, there's no geolo geological risk to one extent because the Duvernay is known as the source rock for countless prolific plays throughout that fair way of Canada over the last 50 years. It's an engineering game and that's what you saw in Englefoot. You saw a gradual a gradual working in to, perhaps to find some of the sweeter spots and then designing your frack stages, designing your drilling techniques to extract maximum value out of it. Now you've just put out an announcement on a transaction that has resulted from a, a broad tender process mm, run I think mm. by Macquarie uh, Tristone out of Calgary. Hasn't it? What's been the reaction to that? Uh, very good, I believe, um, I hope. Uh, we've come out of that with our first transaction um, mm. in relation to the Duvernay lands, although it does include some of our, our Rock Creek as well. Um, essentially, we have sold or farmed out um, a significant but minority portion of our land position. Um, uh, so, for example, uh, we've sold 80% for $20 million. Um, included in that package is also... Um, the first couple of major wells, a vertical well which will go down this year uh, and assuming the results are, are, are creditable then moving on to a horizontal well, um, sort of one might estimate up to $20 million worth of value there. The idea being we have to be in and part of the development phase um, but essentially we're looking to be sitting maybe in 12 or 18 months when the value of the play has really started to get some degree of, of, of substance um, and uh, and then we'll look to transact further on the Duvernay as things go. I mean, in addition to the Duvernay mm. uh, potential, you also have another play, Rock Creek, Rock Creek. Um, which was the original target for acquiring the land. What's this hold for the company and, and what about 2012? What's, go, what's that going to bring? Uh, 2012, well we've got three assets. Uh, there's a little one that we listed on um, in 2010 um, that is a, a heavy oil play, it's a two million barrel thereabouts pool of oil. It's nothing exciting, very cheap wells comparatively. 
Uh, 50 barrels of production per well, we've done two recently, we'll do another three early next year. What that should give us is uh, break even for the company, sort of maybe early quarter two, late quarter one, um, and then we'll progressively just chip away at that. Um, so we don't have a cash requirement, we're actually throwing off some free cash as the year, the year drip goes on. Um, the Duvernay is sort of set for the next 12 months, as I've said. The, the science mm. and the development and people are very secretive in that part of the world as well. They don't drill it well and then suddenly publish the results. So you've got to wait until, uh, in, in most cases, you've got to wait until um, the mandatory expiry period that they can hold on to their results for before it starts to become public. The Rock Creek then will hopefully become an act, a focus of activity. Um, we were talking to a number of parties before that Macquarie process kicked off. Um, about uh, partnering into the Rock Creek. Those talks were effectively put on hold until the, the, um, the process completed. So we're now re revisiting those um, with very keen enthusiasm. We'd like to look at least one, uh, possibly two transactions in the Rock Creek leading to a, a, a pilot drilling program in some of our, our key um, primary drilling locations, which we've already selected for that. What, what about um, your Provost well? It's now in production. I know you're hoping yep. to stabilise around, what, 40 to 60 um, yep. uh, barrels a day, I believe. What's the potential there, though? Um, well, the potential, uh, it, as I say, it's not, it's not a sexy asset, but for a small company like us with two, I'm going to say, enormous, or at least one very big and one potentially mm. enormous plays under our belt that we need to develop over the next, say, 12 to 18 months, um, Provost, in a sense, is a godsend. It, both wells have stabilised, I think, at about 50 barrels a day. Um, they're, cheap, they're cheap to put down. As I said, we're going to put down another three early next year. It will give us break even. It will give us free cash flow. And when additional drilling requirements come up on either of the, the Rock Creek or the, or the Duvernay assets, we have an asset ready made to, to sell to supplement any needs for capital as well. So we don't... We hope to have... Provost delivering that, mm. we will have the Duvernay process going forward with our partner who will be looking to drill, I guess, of the vertical well in the second half of 2012 leading into a horizontal. We'll be looking and watching all of the majors and seeing what, they, what results they come mm. up with and, and, and um, hopefully sooner rather than later. But, and then um, uh, the Rock Creek, we hope to get three wells down during the sort of 2012 uh, 2013 drilling season. With all these numbers, all these expectations and so forth, what do you, how do you view 15 cents a share at your share price at the moment? Um, there is no junior explorer in the world that thinks their share is fairly valued. Mm. Um, look, uh, I think uh, DJ Carmichael, our broker out of Australia, has got a, a, a research note out at a 40 cent price and I think they're working on an update after that transaction was announced the other day, which will, which will perhaps provide an even modest increase on that. And that's based purely on the the look-through value of the land. Yeah, that's just land cost at what this partner transacted on. It doesn't value any oil, any prospective resource. It doesn't value mm, provost. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, somewhere between 15 and 40 is, is very modest and conservative. Mm. Um, <clears throat> it's really as these plays develop that, that the value is unlocked. What, um, what, what about the potential in terms of monetization? Are you going to realise these? Are you going to take them through to production? What, what's the future for them, so far as Mako Energy is concerned? Um, There'll be a number of options as we go along, and that I suppose that's really the strategic task as as we move forward. We are we will certainly have a, we have a working interest in the Duvernay play that we've got, so mm. a ten percent working interest. If that is a if if that is what it is when it's under development, that's a huge asset for a little company. Um, the Rock Creek partnerships, joint ventures that we hope to initiate will give us again working interest. So the answer is yes, we will be in production. Um, yes, we will we'll be monetising in that sense, or it should be reflected in the share price. Um, at this stage, I think we're also keen to have the possibility to retain um, land uh, in total uh, because, yes, at some point in time, if the Duvernay in particular proves itself up over the next 18 months, that is when the very, very large people um, will start to look to buy in and, and we'd like to be as plump a target as possible. Very briefly, final question about yeah. listing. You're listed in Australia, mm -hmm. you're working in Canada, mm -hmm. you're going for a listing in Toronto, I believe. When's that going to happen? We're hopeful to be on the TSX towards, say, mid-end right. quarter one. Right. We had to put that process on a hold whilst the Macquarie process sure. was going because sure. we couldn't, 
Yeah. We couldn't define the business plan, if you like, for 2012. So that is that is going ahead. We'll be on the OTCQX uh, by, let's say, the first week or so in January, right. just to give North American people a platform to look at it. Mm. Um, and I'm here busy trying to find as good an excuse as I possibly can to look at a name listing perhaps further that on is in on, 2012. That is on the, well, that's a possibility. It's a, it's a possibility. Yeah. I mean, you know, three exchanges is a lot of regulation of for course, one little yeah, company. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah. there's demand, and that's really what we're here, if there's demand yeah. and, and interest, then we'll certainly look at it. OK, we'll look to, uh, forward to seeing you again when you're back in London, Simon. That's uh, Simon you, Owen there. Uh, he's the Executive Vice Chairman of Mako Energy. This film is for educational and leisure purposes only. Proactive Investors does not provide investment advice. The company is a publisher and is not registered with or authorised by the Financial Services Authority. Please refer to the full terms and conditions on the Proactive Investors website.